Welcome back to the English Vocabulary Help Podcast. It's your favorite English teacher, Kayla, your friend, your favorite podcast host. And I'm back on another Thursday for you guys because consistency is key. Consistency is key. That's a motto right there. That means it is words that you can live by. And the more consistent I am with this podcast, the better feedback I get from you guys. So I'm going to keep showing up every Thursday and I hope you do as well. Last Thursday's episode was all about things that native speakers don't actually say. The reason I did this episode is because English learners can often come to teachers and native speakers with some really strange phrases and unnatural phrases. So I just wanted to tell you guys like it is and I wanted to explain some of those phrases to you. So I hope you got a chance to check out last week's episode. Thanks again to Audible. They're offering you guys a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial to all of Audible services. And they are supporting English with Kayla. So you can go to audibletrial.com forward slash EWK, like English with Kayla, to receive your free audiobook. And even if you just use the free trial, it helps support this podcast. So thank you so much if you've signed up using the link. I really appreciate it. It's 2021, I'm trying to think of some new podcast ideas that will really help you guys learn some more natural English on the go. And this week, I have come up with some interesting motivational quotes. Quotes are, you know, the written version of what someone has said, just a a quick sentence or a quick paragraph. And I just scoured the internet for some really good inspirational and motivational quotes from important people and important speakers. And I think that these quotes will be interesting to discuss and they will be interesting to look at the English phrases from because there's lots of metaphors, there's lots of hyperboles, there's lots of personification. So (laughs) we'll get into all of that in a second. Each week, I like to start out my episode with a recommendation of maybe a podcast, a YouTube video, a book, or a television show that will help you learn English, something that I recommend, that I enjoyed myself. And this week, honestly, I have two things that I am not going to recommend because I know Netflix is popular almost everywhere in the world. I tried watching the show Bridgerton. It is about a Victorian-era family that is very well off and trying to marry off their daughters. I found the show awful. I made it through two episodes, and I had to stop. (laughs) So do not watch Bridgerton. It's reimagined history, which I really like the concept of. Imagined history with, you know, different norms than what was really happening back then. I just didn't like it. I just found it to be way too cheesy. If you like a good love story, maybe. Maybe it's for you. I guess maybe I'm just not romantic and sappy enough. Sappy is like, you like, you know, romantic things and um, girls falling in love with guys and things. I don't know. I just didn't like it. And then, so... I said to myself, if I clean out my closet, I'm going to reward myself with some Netflix. And I didn't want to watch Bridgerton. So I turned on Emily in Paris because I also heard that show was decent. Again, very cheesy. I think I watched the first two episodes while I was cleaning. I found um, the part of her living in Paris and adapting to the different cultural norms in Paris to be interesting. I'm sure they're very dramatic for what the show is. I'm sure it's not exactly French culture. They really hyped it up to say French people are mean and unfriendly and they don't care about work as much as Americans and they don't like Americans. I'm sure that's, you know, there's some truth into that. I've heard that before but I'm sure it's also dramatic just for the show. Um, Again, very cheesy, not my style of a show, so I don't know if I'll watch it again. Maybe I'll give episode three a try next time I'm cleaning, and I want to reward myself with a show. I haven't read a book yet. I haven't finished a book yet in this 2021 year, so I can't recommend any books yet. (laughs) But if you find a good one, especially using the Audible trial link in the description to help support the podcast, let me know because I am on the hunt for a good one. I've started a few books, 
again, I just can't get into anything. So I need a good recommendation. Yesterday on my Instagram, someone asked me for a good movie to learn some English from. And I recommended one of my all-time classic favorites with Jack Black. He's a hilarious comedic actor from the United States. You've probably seen him before, but he did the School of Rock movie, um, a, I don't know, 10 plus years ago. It's kind of an old movie now, but I just always loved that movie when I was younger, and I still love it to this day. It's just such a heartwarming movie where he really is like a goofy, funny guy, but he teaches kids how to play instruments, and he pretends to be their substitute teacher. And they have a rock band and they do a concert. It's an awesome movie if you haven't seen it. If you have seen it, you know. It's so cute. It's such a good movie. Enough about recommendations now. Let's get right into today's episode. And let's discuss some motivational quotes to give you some motivation to study English, accomplish your dreams, work towards whatever goals you're working towards, and to help learn some new English vocabulary, because this is the English Vocabulary Help Podcast. So here we go. I scoured the web. Scoured means I searched. You searched high, you searched low. Searched high and low is another phrase to just say I was looking all over the internet, and I stumbled upon some inspirational quote websites and was reading through them and was trying to pick some that would be helpful for language, but also just quotes that I enjoyed. When I was younger, I actually had a notebook and I would write down motivational quotes in it or just some of my favorite quotes about life, happiness, relationships, things like that. I just find quotes to be kind of fun to read through. It's interesting to see what very intelligent, very noteworthy people have said. So the first quote is from Booker T. Washington, and if you have not received a education in the United States, you probably don't really know who that is. I actually had to kind of refresh my memory on who a lot of these important people are that have said these quotes in this episode. Booker T. Washington was an orator, which means he was a famous speaker, he was an educator, and he was an advisor to lots of American presidents. He was also African-American, which is very important historically here in the United States. He said, if you want to lift yourself up, lift up someone else. When we talk about lifting someone up, we can physically talk about lifting them up, like off the ground, like carrying them, like lift up a baby and you carry the baby. But when you lift someone up, you lift up their spirit, you lift up their motivation, you are supporting them. You're supporting them emotionally. So one thing that I've really improved on in the last few years, kind of as I keep growing in my adulthood, is lifting others up, not being so competitive with others. And I am a very competitive person still, but I find it really an important part of my life to lift people up, to lift other English teachers up. When I see other English teachers on Instagram that post amazing content and amazing lessons and have amazing courses and YouTube videos, I try to tell you guys about it because not only does that help the other English teacher, but it also helps you guys because you found another English teacher that you can follow and learn from. It benefits everyone. And I totally believe that whatever you give in life, you get back. So right now, I'm not rich. I'm not famous. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever be rich or famous. I don't know if that's really my goal, but I can lift others up by just telling them that they're doing a good job. And I can, you know, spread the word. I have a small platform on Instagram. I can spread the word about other good things that are happening. So our first quote we learned, lift up someone. When you lift up someone, you are promoting them and supporting them. I definitely find this quote to be really true too. If, if you want to lift yourself up, lift up someone else. So if you can't do anything for yourself at the moment and you just don't want to be selfish, just go support someone else and you'll kind of get that energy back and it'll do good things for you too. And oftentimes when you support other people, they want to support you too because they're very appreciative. That's what I take away from that quote. 
Hey guys, quick interruption to the podcast to tell you about this week's sponsor, which is Audible. If you go to my link, audibletrial.com forward slash EWK, like English with Kayla, you will be supporting the English Vocabulary Help podcast and you'll get a free 30 day free trial and free audiobook to listen to to practice your English listening skills. I recommend Audible because I've been using it since 2015. I've completed so many books on it and it's really helped me learn more as an English teacher and just self-help and all sorts of good reading material on there. Audible will also give you access to some cool podcasts and some guided meditations that you can listen to anytime you want. Audible also tracks how much time you listen to your books each week, each month, each year, and I find that to be a really cool feature as well. Again, it's free to you and it supports the English Vocabulary Help podcast. So try out that link, audibletrial.com forward slash EWK to get your free audiobook and 30-day trial. Let's get back into today's podcast. All right, the next quote that I chose that I really enjoyed was from Charles Dickens, and he is an old American. Oh, I think he's American. Let's double check. Um, nope, he's English. He's British. <laughs> I'm sorry. Americans are so ethnocentric. We think everyone's American. I try not to, but I just did it. So sorry about that. Charles Dickens is British. He's written Tale of Two Cities, A Christmas Carol, Oliver Twist. Honestly, I haven't read any of those books, and I don't know many people who have. I've seen the movie Christmas Carol and Oliver Twist. I always thought that when I was younger, if you went to college, you would read books like A Tale of Two Cities and Great Expectations, but my education degree did not require me to do that, so (laughs) I have never read a Charles Dickens novel, but he is one of the greats I've heard. He said, never do tomorrow what you can do today. Procrastination is the thief of time. So his books are very thick. They are very long. So I assume he was not a procrastinator and that he spent so much of his time writing. I like in this quote that he equated procrastination as a thief. He kind of gave it a personification. Procrastination is not a person, but he gave it a trait of a person. They are a thief, so they steal your time. And I find this to be completely true. When you're procrastinating, it doesn't feel good. It feels terrible. And obviously, procrastination is putting off the things that you need to do in the moment. It's wasting time. So, Mr. Charles Dickens, I like your quote. And I think that... If I were to ever read one of your books, maybe I would appreciate the quote even more. Earl Nightingale said, We become what we think about most of the time, and that's the strangest secret. So I did read The Secret, or I listened to it on Audible, actually, (laughs) before the new year had started, because it's just a good reminder to think positive thoughts and to attract positive things towards you. I think if you want to focus on a goal, you need to build that focus or that thinking into your day. So I completely agree. If you think about something most of the time, if you think about a goal most of the time, it will help you achieve it. It is a strange secret that you can, you know, kind of control what's going on around you by just thinking about things. And I don't even mean that in any sort of spiritual or you know, crazy cuckoo way, but I just believe that you can really control your situation with your mindset. And I get the question a lot from English learners about using be versus become. In this quote, if she said, if in this quote, if he said, we be what we think about most of the time, that would not make any sense because It's kind of talking about change. We're becoming. We become what we think about most of the time. So remember that if you're making a change in the way that you are, emotionally, spiritually, physically, you are becoming it. You become it. But if you are not making a change and if you're just talking about what you are, you use the word be. That's a good way to know when to use be versus become. Life is not about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. 
So somebody named Wally Daskal said this quote. I've never heard of her, but I found it on a quote website, and then I had to look up who Lolly is. That's not even a very common first name that I hear. Um, she's just a motivational speaker of some sort. I I don't know much about her, but <laughs> I agree with this quote, one. That's why I chose it. That's why I chose every quote on here, but I thought it's interesting to talk about finding yourself. When you talk about finding yourself, you're obviously not physically lost. A lot of times, if you say to someone that you're not really sure what you want to do in life, you're not really sure about your career choice or your love life even, you can say, I'm just trying to find myself. Just means that you're trying to establish your values. You're trying to reflect on what's going on in your life. Life is about creating yourself. I think that my word of 2021 is going to be creativity because I think that this is unrelated to the quote, by the way. I think that creativity is really important right now as we are living through a pandemic. There's nothing to do. You can't leave your house very often, and I'm finding the most joy in being creative. I did a painting the other day of some flowers. It turned out okay. It wasn't the worst. I'm not a professional painter, obviously, but I just am finding a lot of joy in being creative right now, so it's kind of my word of the year. Henry David Thoreau was an American naturalist, essayist, poet, and philosopher. I'm reading that right off Wikipedia, so he is indeed American. I'm not just assuming this time. He said, it's not what you look at that matters. It's what you see. This is a very interesting quote, and I think it brings up the fact that look, see, and watch can be very confusing verbs when you're learning the English language. If you look at something, you are looking in a direction. It's very like, look over there. You almost need to change what direction your head is and look at it. You can say, look closely. That means I don't want you to look at everything. I just want you to look very closely at something that's small. If you say, watch something, it means you are just noticing and paying attention to what is happening. You can say, can you watch the kids today? This means, can you actually take care of the kids and can you pay attention to the kids all day? You're not saying, can you look at the kids all day? <laughs> that would be strange, but you could use the phrasal verb look after in this case. Can you look after the kids today? See, this is where it gets very confusing. Now, if you say see, it's more what's happening in your brain. Did you see the kids yesterday? This doesn't mean did you look at a picture of them? Did you just happen to drive by their house and see kids? It means did you like interact with them? Did you get to visit with them? So in this quote, he says, it's not what you look at that matters. It's what you see. So you can look at a beautiful painting of the ocean. But what do you see in that painting? Do you see the details? Do you see the sunset? Do you see small people on the beach? It's what you're noticing that matters in life. I think that's very important to think about is to stop and enjoy the good things in life. You can look at everything, but it's what you see. It's, again, your mindset that matters in life. I hope that that explanation helps a little bit with look, watch, and see. I know these are very complicated, especially when you start involving phrasal verbs as well. The famous Spanish artist Pablo Picasso, of course, said, Only put off until tomorrow what you are willing to die having left undone. So when we talk about putting things off, we talk about procrastinating. Put off is a phrasal verb. You can either be put off by something, which means you feel awkward about it or confused about it. So if your friend is being really rude one day and you're not really sure why, you can say, I'm really put off by your bad attitude today. You can also put off something, meaning you are procrastinating it, meaning you're saving it to do later, even though it's important and you need to do it now. So Pablo Picasso says, don't put off anything in the day unless you're willing to die and not have done it. So you have it left undone. Left undone means you didn't do it. I found a quote from somebody named Robin Sharma. He's a Canadian author. He said, don't live the same year 75 times and call it a life. 
So a life is obviously when you're living, you call, you know, what you're doing your life. We say the phrase get a life to mean find some interests. So it's actually a great comeback if someone is just really being nosy. They're worrying about what you're doing. They're being critical about what you're doing. Maybe someone in your family is always asking you, you know, do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a boyfriend? Um, Or do you have a girlfriend? When are you going to get married? And you find that annoying and you want them to stop worrying about you. Don't say this to your parents because obviously it could be pretty disrespectful. But you could say, get a life. Stop worrying about my life. So what this quote is saying is if you just do the same thing every year, you don't push yourself outside of your comfort zone, you don't do the things that you want to do, you just live a very normal life, well, the quote saying you should not call it a life. And I think the reason he said 75 times is because, you know, that's a pretty average lifespan, 75 years. Thank you guys for listening to episode 16 of the English Vocabulary Help Podcast. I really enjoyed doing this type of episode where it's more casual, where I'm just talking about, you know, some quotes that I found. I know it's kind of a different format than what I normally do, but I hope that you liked it. And I'm really thankful that you guys are here listening and giving me the freedom to try new things. Be creative. Remember, creativity is my word for 2021. I think I just declared that today. Today is January 5th, no, January 13th when I'm recording this. It'll come out on the 14th, and I think creativity is going to be my word of the year. If you choose a word of the year, and it could be an English word or it can be in a different language, I would love to hear it. Follow me on Instagram at English with Kayla. Leave me a message or comment with your word of the year. Thanks again to Audible. Remember, use the link audibletrial.com forward slash EWK like English with Kayla and you'll get a free audiobook to listen to. And just by signing up for the free trial, it helps support this podcast. And thanks again to Audible. I'll be back next Thursday with another English vocabulary help podcast and good luck studying English. <laughs>